Hi everyone, I'm Erica Orr and welcome to Creative Interview. Today I have abstract artist Walter Redondo. How are you doing today, Walter? I'm doing great. Awesome. I'm really happy to be here and just to be part of this project is exciting for me. Awesome. And all this talented, uh, this talented area of San Diego with art is amazing. Yeah, right. I know. I'm very excited about all the <clears throat> art opportunities that are happening in San Diego. And there was a, another artist I was talking to about how sometimes we can tend to, tend to stay in our own bubble which I can definitely see. Um, so hopefully with these projects that we're all working on, we'll be able to show everyone around the country how awesome San Diego is with their art. Oh, I totally, am. yeah, I, I agree. You know, and I, and I have to say, you know, because I paint out of my home, that sometimes I don't get out and paint amongst the other painters and, yeah. and be part of the, the process and the growing uh, you know, number of artists that are happening. I mean, I look on Facebook or Instagram and we start to realize there are so many artists and there's so much talent Yeah. everywhere that it's, I'm just going, wow, to be part of that is amazing. Mm -hmm. But uh, so your story is quite interesting. So you actually were, per, were a professional tennis player, yes. which is super awesome. And then you transitioned into being an artist. You said 25, 26, 27? Yes. And so how has being an artist so when you were okay, so when you were a professional tennis player, were you practicing any type of creativity or any artistic endeavors? That's a good question. You know, um, I was always doing something on the side when I was playing. I'd come home from the tour and I would just draw and get lost. Mm -hmm. But you know, being on the tennis court is a very creative process as well, is because we have to think very quickly because there's so many angles and so many bounces and so many things that are occurring within that that time span mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what's so amazing is oftentimes i'll share that on the court i start with one stroke and on the canvas i start with one stroke and then i finish with one stroke and so in that process there is so much similarity within that time i mean to be intuitive to a ball mm -hmm. to be intuitive to to the surroundings, the score, and to understand how to resolve mm -hmm. is very similar to, to what happens on a canvas for me. And so why did you choose or why does abstract art call to you? Um, I think the creativity. I, th I like, um, I mean, I started with realism and I really enjoyed it. And a lot of people when I was first starting would always say, you know, Walter, you need to stick with your realism. You'd be very good if you just continue to do it. But it wasn't spontaneous enough for me. Um, I'm very intuitive, and mm -hmm. I think part of that, again, is part of the tennis of being intuitive to uh, where I am instantly mm -hmm. and how to handle the ball because there's so much skill involved as it is in art. To be able to handle the ball in a certain uh, situation off balance or on a side of the court and knowing that there's someone on the other side that is just as experienced that has that part covered. And I have to be very skillful in the way that I handle the ball. Mm -hmm. And so when we think about using the canvas, we're basically using space and the way that we, we move things. And so it's kind of really been just an amazing um, understanding of how to take what I've learned, not only just uh, tennis-wise in the ability to handle the ball, but even just the perspective and the process mm -hmm. of, of maybe uh, realizing that during that season of my life, towards the end, you know, I was playing or performing more out of fear than I was being challenged. Mm. And so when I got off the tour and I, I was thinking, you know, wow, this is not fun anymore. And I was coming from a tournament and I said to my wife, I said, you know, I'm going to get into this art world and I'm, I loved it anyway. I was doing it, you know, just for the fun of it. And I'm going to start just painting like a, like a, like a child. I'm not going to care about anything, just totally free. So because fear totally bound me in my performance, I thought that the, fir the first thing I need to do is learn to be free. Not only on canvas, but just in life, mm -hmm. without any kind of cares or, or any kind of you know, criticisms you know, affecting me in any way. You know, because it's being out there on the tour, you're, there's a lot of loss and there's a mm -hmm. lot of win. And sometimes when there's a lot of loss, we become a little bit more hopeless about, am I really doing this? Am I, am I, is this really what I need to do you know, from week to week spending all this money? Mm -hmm. you know, traveling around the world and so on. And so, you know, you start looking at this, you know, I've got a ship there and I've got a, another canvas, so I got more paint to buy. And, and before you know it, you know, maybe nothing's selling and you go, wow, am I do should I be doing this? Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of the challenges that are similar. And I love it because I think it's part of the faith thing. I love being able to walk into uh, a place with an empty canvas. And I share this with a lot of my students, you know, before you even get onto the court, we have to totally believe that we're going to win. 
So we go in with an expectation, just the way I would with maybe resolving a painting or an open canvas, and just walk in with the understanding that the beauty thing, the beautiful thing about faith is the substance of things you know hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. So I'm not seeing anything yet, nor is my students that I'm talking or working with, but we do have to see something. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we're seeing a completed canvas mm -hmm. uh, with, with the understanding that you know, it, whether it sells or not, but it's putting our, our heart out there, really going after it and totally believing. And I think it's a privilege for anybody to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's just me out of my own life. Yeah, and there's uh, two things uh, I would love to bounce off of that. So one is what I learned from a great friend of mine is the f uh, freedom of doing it wrong. Like mm, you, beautiful. You know, like you're all, it's, a, it's, you're, it's the freedom of not having to do it right. You know, it's oh. okay if it's wrong. Powerful. Because that has always stopped me a lot from, you know, we were talking about dreaming earlier. Oh. So going, you know, dreaming, but then actually going after it. And it's like, well, what if the first, you know, what if I do it wrong? What if I make a fool of myself? Blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> and so she was like, well, you know, it's the freedom from not doing it right. And oh. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, cool. Sweet. And then the second part about, you were saying about fear, about envisioning that you're going to win is it's so true because if you keep telling yourself i'm scared i'm this i'm that you will start to to freeze up but then if you go i'm courageous i can oh, handle it yes. i can handle this conversation <laughs> i can you know it can you know if i it, you know especially if you do something to upset someone you know i'm not afraid of them being upset i accept that mm. responsibility it makes you stronger. Oh, it's beautiful. I love what you're sharing. Yeah. You're so right. Yeah. You know, because when I when I share with my students, I will say, you know, there's two types of energies on the court. There's either encouragement or discouragement. And so we have to be able to, you know, entertain one of them. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to entertain discouragement. Very easy, but it takes a lot to really get yourself seen correctly and start moving in encouragement. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting with with regards to what you're saying, the fear thing of not wanting to do something wrong, there is a thing called spirit of error. And so when we start to understand that we're afraid to do something to make an error, it does paralyze us. And it starts, I think, very early in life. Mm -hmm. You know, with children who maybe all of a sudden have said, don't do that, or, or don't, don't, don't. And then before you know it, they're paralyzed on not wanting to do anything. Mm -hmm. And this is some of the things that I have to work with breaking through with my students when I'm on the court with them, if I'm not painting. And I think with myself, I have to practice the very same thing. I have to understand that any mistakes or whatever that might be, whatever a drip or uh, is going to be okay. And mm -hmm. I love the challenge of being able to see something that I would, might say, wow, that's a good painting and it would sell maybe. But at the same time, because I know there's a deeper place for me, I will literally just go crazy on it again, just to, to get myself into that higher place where I have to believe more and, and, and then take the work ethic of going out every day and hitting balls mm -hmm. over and over you know just the repetition of doing something and and believing that we're going to get better at it mm -hmm. and so i think this is kind of a neat thing that we have as people is that we can better ourselves continually with the very thing that you were saying earlier you know talking to ourselves correctly so that you know what comes out of our mouth because these are basically gates our ears and our eyes and our nose so if we taste something we don't like you know we're obviously spit it out Mm -hmm. So what comes out is we're going to hear. That's a great point, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's important that I think, again, if we're going to talk to ourselves or talk to anybody, hopefully, again, it's something that's going to be edifying and encouraging for another rather than it being, you know, yeah. as we know. Yeah. And especially, too, about, you know, living in the discouragement, it's, you know, I think any creative artist, it's when you do create, it's very vulnerable, mm -hmm. right? Because, like, you know, you put yourself into it, whether that's a conscious decision or a subconscious decision. When you show that work and you hear someone say, like, oh, that's not good, or why are you doing that, or, you know, this or the other, if you allow that to stick with you, oh. you won't be able to grow. And I know I was reading on your website that art has actually allowed you to connect more with yourself and yes. allowed you to understand who you are more as a, as a person. Yes. And I think with that being said, it's the same as tennis because I'm having to reach into a deeper place. The deeper place has got to be in here. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, we have this and this is really good where our emotions and so on are. But down to the very core of our being where we, we know things, that's the place we want to go to. 
Like, I know, I have to know, you know, just like we have learned our name. We know our name for sure. How do we get to that place where we get to know something really well? Mm -hmm. And I will share this with a lot of my students. You know, when you get to the point where you know when you hit a ball, that that ball is going to stay in. It takes a lot of work. Uh, well, how old are the kids uh, or the, the I, people that you're I you're range uh, from seven-year-olds to, I don't work with a lot of young kids right now. I mean, I have a few. I have a couple that are, are you know, yeah. really, really neat. And they're very open, which is really got, I mean, just amazing. So it's fun to be able to speak into their lives. Yeah. It's so wonderful. And then, you know, we get, I work with professionals, I work with adults, and it's so interesting because I think tennis brings out the same thing that it did in me. Yeah, and just, no matter what age you are, it usually, like those words that you're able to do, those words of inspiration, hopefully that will allow them to get into their creative process more too. Mm, yeah. You know, I mean, you can, when you're <clears throat> coaching, you're like, you're talking about, you can bring in how creativity and your artistic uh, practice allows you to feel more whole, more purposeful. Mm, yeah, I love that. Yeah, very purposeful. I love being deliberate about things, you know, and, and this is again, just going back to tennis or whether it be art, being very deliberate about what I'm going to do, whether it is that I'm going to completely cover this painting because mm -hmm. it's not to the point that I, I want it and uh, someone might be happy with it, but it's not enough for me. And, and so this is the fun thing I think about art is being able to push ourselves just like life, mm -hmm. you know, and this is where I tell the kids, you know, or any adults, I say, you know, tennis is supposed to bring out the best in us, not the worst. And sometimes it doesn't necessarily bring out the best. So we need to take a look at that. And I think life is like that. Sometimes when we think about life, it's, it is really basically a sport to some sense, because I will tell the, the, the students, you know, what you do on the tennis court, you often will do off the court. And what you do off the court, you're going to do on court. So how you handle things off the court, you're going to bring to the court. So if you're handling things in a situation where frustration and anger or something that you need to do with off the court, it's going to show up under pressure on the court. So we need to take a look at the deeper things of what's happening here, because when we go into the court, that pressure is going to surface something. Mm -hmm. So when I think about art, you know, it, it's, it's so similar. I Especially mean, abstraction art, or, you know, because it's very emotional based. Yes, I love, I love that, mm -hmm. that, that place, you know, that emotional place and uh, being able to be, uh, to elevate my thinking like you were talking about, or elevate my spirit, man, um, you know, to a place where learning to believe is, is so powerful for me. Uh, to know that as a people or for myself that I could make a difference in someone else's life or make a difference in life, someone, just people's lives, whether mm -hmm. it be through art or through tennis or by just what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the things that you've shared with me, you know, are, are having an effect on me. And oh, so, so, oh no, without a doubt, it is. I mean, just the things you're sharing, yeah. I totally agree with. Yeah. And so it's really kind of neat because what we're doing basically is we are affecting each other's lives. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and just, you know, having you all be, letting me be part of this is affecting my life. And so, you know, that's why I think it's so important to be grateful. Absolutely. You know, isn't it amazing? I just find, wow, ah, just, uh, you know, to be able to be waking up every morning to be able to do this or to be able to go out and affect a life is amazing. Mm -hmm. So affecting people's lives through your art, this particular piece, uh, what's the name of it? It's called The Bloom. The Bloom. Yeah. And you were saying earlier that you you always see a main figure in your pieces. Yes. Yes. I, yeah. So can you explain, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about this one? No, you tell me. Oh, God. <laughs> So anyway, this piece, okay, is about, obviously, there's some floral in there. And so because we have to, it's called the Sharing Ground Series. I did a number of, of works this way. Now, I have more. But it's about, you know, uh, us growing next to each other on common ground, sharing ground. And as we grow around each other, things are going to happen. We have to share things. And so as we're sharing, as we're growing together, what I'm hoping is that this appears Mm -hmm. And so, you know, whether it be that we're looking at flowers, whether you want to say this is a head, this is a head looking down to a patch of maybe children that are, you know, it's whatever that viewer wants to see. But for me, there's always some form of figure in there having some, some, uh, 
some look into something or some, uh, a figure moving outward to a, a destination of some sort. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, uh, destinations are really important, whether you want to call them goals, you know, being able to look forward to something yeah. in the future. Again, it's just like walking onto the tennis court, believing something. We don't know what it is, but the, the fun of it is to be able to believe that something good is going to come out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it doesn't feel that way, but I think we've all discovered that sometimes, as that saying goes, you know, what we think is not necessarily a blessing really becomes a blessing. Mm -hmm. Well, what I really like about this piece, too, is the yellow and the oranges are, are I mean, those are the colors that stand out more in the lime green, but then you also have a little bit of the darker colors in there, too, mm. to really, because, you know, in there is light, there is always dark. Too. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, is it good? That's how I think we can, exp we can yeah. experience the light. Yeah. Well, you have to, to understand know the dark. Those? Yes. Isn't that, that great? Light, yeah. Isn't that neat? Yeah. So I think that spiritual place, you know, the heart, the person, you know, the, the person, the character, the, the, the place that we really want to grow is, is so important. And I think if we are really sincerely wanting to affect an individual, we first have to take care of our own business. And that will also resonate through your work as well. People will see that, they will feel that because, um, People will feel in the, and when you're not authentic, when you're not being real, if it's just kind of thrown on there. And I think what makes abstraction art so popular too is that because there is so emotion in it, so mm. much emotion that goes into it, it comes out of the canvas or whatever. Uh, you know, I really on. appreciate you saying that because you know I do put in a lot of emotion, and I, and I, and I really just absolutely enjoy doing it. You know, just uh, like I was sharing with you just earlier, just experiencing and believing for the freedom mm -hmm. to get back to that childlike place mm -hmm. of understanding that everything is going to be okay. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I definitely. Whenever things get rough, I always remind myself, I'm like, it's not life or death here. Everything's gonna be just fine. Why take life so seriously? Oh my! I did yeah, that. Yeah. I learned that one. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand. Absolutely. <laughs> and then, so I also know you do sculptures. I do. So you like to mix uh, found things with new things. Yes. To kind of what bring life back to it. Yes, I. You know, I just think again when I think about the things that are laying out that are lost, and then being being able to find something that would be lost and then to be able to bring something together and create a, 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 a togetherness, mm -hmm. forming it into something that is going to have an effect is very powerful for me. Mm -hmm. You know, because we would sometimes just disregard that and not think that be worth, worth anything. Mm -hmm. But when we think about life, you know, anybody's life, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And just because it may be, it may look like trash or, yeah. you know, garbage doesn't mean that it needs to be. That's right. You know, get, yeah. pr repurpose it, right? Repurpose <laughs> yeah. all over again. Yeah. Put that soul, Absolutely. you know? <laughs> you get me all. Mm, yes. Feel it, Walter. Feel it. <laughs> no, I love it. No, I, I love, um, I love your passion for it. Oh, and, thank you. And, you know, your, what's the word for it? Your awareness of it, your consciousness of it. Thank you. you know, I think that's very important uh, when we are, I mean, I think art can be anything, but when we can really put ourselves into the process, it just, I think it creates a little bit more power. It mm. can empower us and empower others. So, yeah, yeah, I sure hope, you know. Yeah, that's I know, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's I guess I have to learn to keep believing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, perfect. Well, uh, let everyone know where they can Beautiful. find more of your work okay. or any upcoming shows or anything like that. Well, uh, my Facebook is, I mean, my, my WalterRedondo.com, Instagram on Instagram. Also here in San Diego, I'm also um, with Alex Salazar, Fine Art. Nice. He represents me here in San Diego and then other galleries in Florida and Santa Monica and, you know, Los Angeles. So National it's, artist. Uh, <laughs> well, but, you know, I'm, I'm just, like I say, grateful to be, you know, traveling with other artists. Awesome. Well, cool. <laughs> well, thank you, Walter. I really You're appreciate welcome. you chatting with thank me. You. And uh, stay creative. <laughs>